Hey guys, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to Let Code. In this video, we are going to learn how to validate the sorting function. Right? For example, in our table page, we have this table. Once I click on this element, it's actually going to do the sort. So first by default, if I refresh the page, you can see that the by default, the value is not sorted. So 24, 37, again 24 and 67 and 49. So the value is not sorted by default. Once I click on this caps element, you can see that the value is not sorted. So we are going to learn how to validate this kind of table or maybe any of the element. There are plenty of ways to do this. I'm just going to keep it very simple. I'm going to use the map function as well as the arrays.sort. So let's see how to do that. So the basic idea is very simple. We have to first find the table and then we have to store all the data. I mean the columns data basically and we'll just sort the data. And once we sort the data, we'll just again come and click on this element and after that again, we'll retrieve all the data and we'll check with this data the stored already stored data and this data so let's see in code how to do that so of course i have to take the url first and i'm going to find the table so if i go and inspect and if i just give double slash table you can see that we have two tables now so of course i can take based on the id or maybe any class name or maybe any unique locator but I'm going to use the CSS and we'll just use the last table. So because of course I want to get the second table. So I'm just going to take the last one. So here I can say like double dollar that is um, jQuery symbol. And here I'm going to say that I want, I'm going to find the table. And of course I'm interested on the last table. That means last element. Now let's store this in a variable called table or maybe my table. Okay, now we got our table. So from the table, we are going to find the rows, right? Now, why we are going to do this? Why we are um, finding element within element means probably you can check out my web table concept video where I have explained the same in detailed manner. Okay, so from this table element, I'm going to find all the rows. So my table dot uh, again, we are going to use this double dollar and I'm interested on the table rows. So basically I'm trying to find all the table rows. So let's store this in a variable called rows. And from the rows, I'm going to find the table data. So that is this column, right? So this, so this is going to be zero, one, two, and three. So basically we have to take this three. How does it works means, so within the table, we are trying to find all the table rows and within the rows, first row, I'm trying to find this value. So that is in the uh, 0, 1, 2 and in the third position, right? So let's take the value. So I'm just going to use the rows dot map function. And here, of course, we have to use the async and then it is going to return me one element at a time and the index of that element. And what are the element I'm going to get? I'm just going to return that. Return the text from that element. So return await then followed by element dot get text. But before that, I have to find that particular table data, not the entire element, right? So let's do that. So element dot from the row. So from the one first row, I'm going to find all the TDs. And from the TDs, I'm interested on interested to get the third element right so we'll store this in a variable called data and i'm just going to return the text from that data right so what we have done is we have found the table the last table and then we found all the rows and from each and every row this is like your loop right again i have discussed about this map concept in detail so i would recommend you to um, check that video so from this map, we are getting one element at a time and index of the element. We are not going to use the index, but I'm interested only on the element. From the element, I am trying to find all the table data, so TD tags. And from the TD, all the TD tags, I am trying to get only the third one. Because I'm going to check the sorting functionality of this particular row or the entire column, not the row, so entire column. So I'm just taking this one, right? So whatever the data we got from there, we are taking all the text here. And of course we have to return that. Now I can store this in a variable called uh, maybe my data, something like that. Now we'll just try to print this data first. So I'm just going to say like console.log and we'll say like before sorting. So as soon as I, I open the page, I'm going to get this one. So 
let's say like await and then followed by my data okay and then we'll just sort this data right so it's going to be very easy so my data dot sort is the function to do the sorting right and if you noticed the extension i mean the id itself um, giving this await because we have to wait for this element to resolve the promises and after that we can apply the sorting function to it now after that i'm just going to print the same object so when we do the sorting it is going to reflect the original data or the original variable itself so here we'll just say like after so here we're just printing the data nothing much here now let's try to run this Okay, so that is run successfully and here you can see that before sorting the data is like 24 37 24 67 and 49 and once we do the sorting using this sort function we can see that the data is sorted and it's correct now now what we have to do is we have to click on this particular element once i click on this of course it's going to do the sorting right so let's try to inspect this and maybe i can use the product like text path And I'm going to take this based on the text based XPath. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm also going to do the click action. So let's click on this and we'll copy this code, the snippet, let's copy. And here we'll say like this guy, right? And of course I have to use the await keyword. So that's it. So we have done the click action. So what will happen means once we, uh, once we load the page, we already got this data. Now I'm clicking on this particular element. So the data is sorted. Now, of course, I have to take this data again. So the same code, whatever we have written here, we are going to repeat. So I'm just going to copy and paste over here and we'll just change this variable to maybe after sorted data, something like that. This variable is no need to change because these are enclosed within this function. I mean, within this bracket, that means, of course, it's like a local variable, but this is uh, within this bracket. So, of course, I have to change that variable name. So we got this data as well. Now let's try to print this. So console.log and uh, of course we have to use the await keyword and then followed by after sort, right? And we'll add some string concatenation maybe just to identify. So here we'll say like after sort clicks or maybe after element sort clicks. Okay, so let's try to run this now again. Okay, so here you can see that before sorting the data is unsorted and uh, once we call the sort function, the data is sorting. And once we click on that particular element, the data is sorted. So this data and this data both are same, right? So we have to uh, check whether this data and this data are same. If that's going to be same means, of course, our test case is passing. I mean, is passed or else it's failed. Now, to do the comparison, of course, we can write our own logic and we can do that. But we have the Jasmine, so we can make use of it. And within a single line, I can just do this. Or else, of course, you have to write your own logic to sort the arrays values, right? So let's not make it complicated. I'm just going to uh, write expect condition here. So expect and then await and we'll say like uh, my data uh, to equal so here we are comparing like objects so of course we have to use this to equal and here we'll say like await and then followed by after sorted data so if this data both the data are going to be same the test case is going to pass or else it is going to fail so let's try to execute this again So it was very quick and you can see that zero failures and this green dot of course we can understand our test script is passed but just in case if you have doubt like whether this expect is actually doing the compressor or not we can do that we can check that so what i'm trying to do is now i'm just um i will not click this element right so if i don't click this element means the data is not going to sort in the ui 
but here we have sorted already. So both the data, if you are going to compare means, of course, it should match, mismatch, correct? So let's try to execute this again. And this time, of course, it should fail. And here you can see that the, in the UI itself, you can see that the data is not sorted. And here also you can see that it says that uh, 24 is equal to 37. We expected, but of course that's failing, right? That means of course to um, compare any of the array values, we can use the expect and it's going to make our life more easier. So this is fine, this working fine, but there's one challenge as well in the sorting functionality. So when we do the sorting, the if the numbers are two and uh, that's fine, that's going to work. But if the numbers are going to be more than three or four, uh, in JavaScript, the sorting doesn't work always as we expected. So at that point, we have to write our custom compare function like this. Just you have to copy this and paste within this and that's going to work. So you just do like this. Okay. So this is applicable only for integers. For string, you no need to do this. Um, since this page, all the data are written like uh, get text, of course, it's returning a string, so it's working fine. But in case if you want to do some parsing and you want to uh, convert the string to number format, and then if you have to check, probably you have to use this one, right? Now, this is number working fine, but just in case if you wanted to do for this text also, you can do that. So same thing, instead of get zero, we'll just pass this like get of um, zero here. So zero in the sense we are interested on this first column now. And of course I have to click on this guy, right? So I'm just going to copy this text here and I will just replace here. Okay, so let's try to run this again. and we got some failure seriously let's see um okay it says that uh xpath is not a uh, invalid so it's basically invalid because i didn't check in the dom i just copy and paste it so that's the reason so let me check so here we have a opening bracket but we do not have a closing bracket here so that's the problem and of course a single quotes now let's try to run this again don't do that you always have to check in the browser and then you have to write I just know, uh, so that's uh, that's why I'm using like this. Okay. Okay. So here you can see that one spec pass and upper zero failures, and you can see that the text is sorted properly, right? So in this way, we can check any of the sorting functionality, even if it's web table or maybe some uh, another thing, and everything we can check using this uh, sort function, right? You might also ask me like, Koshi, what happens if there are multiple pages and we wanted to do, uh, I mean, multiple pages in the sense pagination and we have to check the sorting functionality. Of course we can do that, but again, it's based on your database. So all the database doesn't work in the same sorting algorithm. It's differs based on the database. So if you have like paginations, probably I will recommend you to just take the first value and you click on the last page and expect that the first value, once we sort it, it should go in the last version. So like that, you can do it. Uh, might not be a perfect solution, but comparing with all the values, doing all the pagination, I think this is going to be your best solution. So let's quickly recap. So here, first, of course, we are loading the website and we are trying to find the table. And last means it is going to take the last element. So we have two tables, so I'm taking the last table. And from the table object, we are trying to find all the table rows. And from the rows, we are trying to find all the table data. And from the table data, we are picking only the third column. Um, yeah, for the number third, for zero for the text, right? And then we are just sorting the value. And in the UI level, we are clicking on that particular element. So the sorting will happen on the UI. Once that happens, again, we are trying to find this element of the particular rows or the columns and then we are checking with this expect to that particular sorted and unsorted data right that's it it's very easy and also you have to remember one thing here i have found this rows first and i'm using this rows dot map here as well as here it's working fine because my page is not getting reloaded but if the page is going to reload in your browser 
of course it will give you stale element reference so at that point you have to just refine the same element and that will work fine okay so probably i will talk about the stale element reference in another video in detail so we'll skip that as of now so that's it from my side i hope you have enjoyed the video and you have learned this uh, sorting function thanks for watching see you in the next one please